Something I really enjoy doing in my classroom is science stations. Now there's many different types of ways you can do science stations. You might have heard of some science stations that are seven to nine stations where there's an input station and an output station, and each one takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the students to actually go through. The science stations that I like to do are the blended learning science stations with the station rotation model. In that case, there's only three station. There's an online station, a group collaboration station, and my favorite, the teacher-led station. Hi, I'm Christy from Adventures in iSTEM, and I'm a middle school teacher with 25 years experience in the classroom, and I love helping other teachers empower their students to take more ownership of their learning. So let's talk about the station rotation model for science stations. With this model, I like to have my students first do each one individually. So in order to do science stations really well, I feel it's really important to have the students go through each station in the beginning as a class. Now you're not gonna repeat the exact same station later on. What I'm talking about is the first time you're actually gonna be doing science stations. Instead of having three different sets of groups doing something different at the exact same time, which is the goal, by the way. Instead, you're gonna have everyone in the class do one station. Now, the idea of doing just one station together as a whole class is to help them understand what they're doing when they're at that particular type of station. For example, in the online station. Now, the online station, you could have them do it individually, pairs, or in groups. I usually like to have my students work in pairs when they're in the online station, so that way they can help each other if they have questions, um, if they're confused about maybe one of the directions or they don't know how to navigate the actual online activity. It allows them to work together to also talk about what they're seeing and what they're observing in that online investigation. So I like to have mine working in pairs for that one. With the online investigation, they're usually doing some type of simulation. So taking them through, okay, when you get to a simulation, what's the first thing you're supposed to do? In this case, for the online stations, no matter what, when they're doing that simulation, I always have my students just play around for about two minutes. Click on one button, click on another button, move things around, see what happens. Just get used to that particular simulation. So for two minutes, they're playing around. Once they've played around, they kind of get an idea of what the different buttons do, what the different parts are. Then it's time to get to work. With the online station, you'll want to have uh, a goal for them. So a big idea question that they're answering and give them some directions. Now these do not have to be step-by-step -step in detail directions, although they could be. But instead, you'll want to have them give some simple directions for maybe what things they need to click on in the simulation, like if they're doing a FET lab, uh, maybe what buttons they need to make sure that are clicked on for that simulation and what buttons to then not click. You'll wanna give them a task of what they want to be observing, what data they're gonna be collecting, and what they should be looking for. So they're gonna be going through that online station and investigating whatever topic it is you're doing. So for the scientific method station, which I do in the beginning of the year, um, what I have them do is I have them do the FET lab on acceleration. And we'll get back to that exact same lab in quarter three, where they're gonna have that exact same thing, which you know as middle school students, they've probably forgotten that they actually did it. It will look somewhat similar to what they've seen. They're somewhat familiar with it, but they've probably forgotten that they actually did the exact same one uh, a few months earlier because they're constantly inundated by new information that it doesn't always stick. So in the beginning, we're doing the scientific method lab and we're doing it for acceleration. So in this case, I might want them to look at um, how does mass affect the acceleration? And they're gonna be keeping the force the same, they're gonna be checking the acceleration tabs, and they're gonna be just changing the mass of it to see how fast can that object move 
with different masses. And so it's very basic. And I might just give them some information about, you know, writing down what their independent variable might be, what their dependent variable might be, what they need to control and to record the data, and then to draw their conclusions on how mass affected acceleration. And again, they're going to be doing that together. Now, when they're doing this online station, the first time they're doing it, remember, I told you we're going to do it as a class, but I'm reminding them that when we actually start this science station rotation model where three groups are going at the same time, I will not be available to help the online station students because I will be doing my own teacher led. So during this time, we practice asking other groups who are doing the same station first before asking me. So they are required if they need to get up out of their seats to go talk to another person, they can do that. They have to go ask three other people before they're allowed to ask me. And when they need to ask me, they put on a post-it note, they tell me which uh, groups they went to, so which students they already talked to, and then they have the question that I will answer. And I'm just observing, I'm just going around just to make sure they're actually following the directions to make sure they're staying on task at that time. The next station would be the group led station. Now, this one is great because the students have to collaborate together as a group and you'll want to assign group roles for this. Now you can actually yourself assign or you can have the students assign their own roles, but roles like CEO, uh, recorder, the reporter and information like that, the materials person, the timer. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to be doing some type of hands-on activity. So this is where they're going to be actually physically manipulating something. For the scientific method station, what we're doing is a pendulum. And so I have them create their pendulums and it's super simple. You don't need much material. You just need a desk or you can even use a chair. Um, I have a ruler that you want a strong ruler. You don't want the floppy ones because you want a ruler that you can then tape to the desk and it will sh uh, go off the desk for a little bit, maybe about six inches off the desk. And at the end of that, you attach a string, which then is attached to, let's say, a paper clip that you can put different weights on. And that's what we do. So the string is then taped to the ruler and you have it as a certain length. And then you have a paper clip attached to the end of that string that they can then easily put washers on the end of that. And what they're doing is they're seeing, does mass affect the speed of the swing. So and we're, we're measuring swing, uh, the speed by how many swings are in 30 seconds. Because I find that if they try and count beyond that 30 seconds, <laughs> they kind of lose track of their, of their timing. It's, it's just, they're getting bored at that point. So they're gonna be doing that. Now with this activity, I'm just watching again to make sure is the CEO, the leader, directing his group or her group? Are they making sure that the group is doing what they're supposed to be doing? Is the recorder recording the information that the group is giving them? And then the reporter's job is to take that information and when we're done with that science station to speak out and explain what we did. And the materials person is taking care of the materials and the making sure that we're all on time on this one. So again, as we're doing this the very first time, we're gonna do it as a full entire class just so they can get used to what does it mean to be at that type of station? What does group work look like? Um, what is the job different jobs supposed to be doing and they know once again They're not allowed to ask me questions because again, I'm gonna be at a different station I'll be at the teacher-led station. So the same rule applies You have to go to three different groups first before you can ask me a question and again post-it note What were the other group members you went to students names? And then what is your question that you have and I find that the, doing that rule having that little technique really limits students, number one, not working because they are confused. Number two, it also limits them coming to me all the time, asking me for help when they can just ask someone next to them who can easily identify a simple question they have. The last station is the teacher-led station. Now here's why I love this station rotation model. This is the teacher-led station. That means that I get to work with, instead of 36 students, which is how many students are in my class, I get to work with 12. 12 students. With that 12 students, I can really help them either challenge them and go beyond and challenge their thinking and pose questions for them, or 
I can help clarify any misconceptions, misunderstandings, parts that they're struggling with, and really help them gain a better understanding of the topic. So with the scientific method station, usually we're reviewing something. And with this one, I like to have them go through a scenario that's already been done, so much what they would see like an estate test, where they're reading through an experiment, and we're just pulling out, okay, what was the question they were um, looking for? What was their hypothesis? What um, information were their independent variables, the dependent variables? And I can quickly find out, do they know what independent variable means? Do they know what dependent variable means? Do they know what controls are? Can they look at a data table or a graph or look at a data table and make a graph? Can they look at a graph and analyze it? I can quickly see which students have remembered their steps of the scientific method that they were taught last year or years pre previous and which ones just need that simple reminder. And it's a quick fix. It's quickly talking about, okay, this is what an independent variable is. This is what we're talking about. What would be some examples in different experiments and helping them that way. So again, with the teacher-led station, again, the first time we do it, it's a full entire class. Now, that's the first time you do it. You have the different stations. The second time you do it, you're going to actually have three different groups doing three different activities at the same time. It's called controlled chaos. Before you do the science stations, you will want to have expectations for your students. So I usually have a list of about five expectations. This is what I expect from you when we're doing science stations. I expect you to collaborate. I expect you to help each other out. I expect you to ask questions when you're unsure and ask questions to other students. I expect you to stay on task. I expect you to manage your time. These are simple expectations that I'm asking them to do, right? And when we get started, the first thing I do is I have the different groups and you can decide how you want to do your groups. You can have them already be in groups and just having two or three groups being at one station and two or three groups being at another station, however you want to do it. You could have it where your really high level students are together and if you want to do a challenge activity when you're with them and you're teacher led, you could have it where your struggling students are together if you really want to help them when you're in their teacher led station. Again, you to decide how you're doing it. I do it different ways depending on what the topic is, depending on what my students' needs are. If I have one topic where I really have struggling students, but I also have other students who really got it, I might group them by their ability for that particular topic. So that way I can differentiate my teacher-led station to really hit the needs of my students. If, there's, if it's another one where maybe everyone's kind of on the same page and their um, knowledge of that topic, I'll group them up heterogeneously and we just mix them all together, all right? So those are different ways that you can group them. When you're doing, though, your science stations, again, you're going to give your expectations, right? Then you're going to have the students get into their different groups, and the first thing you do, no matter what, no matter which station they're in, you ask them to go through and read the direction first. I know, I know, students don't like to read directions. You're going to have them read the direction first. You're then going to have them explain the direction to someone else. You're then going to have those students ask their partners, do you have any questions about what you're supposed to be doing? Do you need anything clarified? Again, they're not asking you yet, they're asking their partner. Then after you're done with all that, then you go around really quickly each group. Explain what you're doing. Don't ask them, do you know what you're doing? Have them, you just ask them, can you explain what you're supposed to do in this station? Can you explain? Can you tell me what your job is to do? Or what is the first thing you're supposed to do in this station? So you're asking them questions. You're not, it's not open-ended of, do you understand? Because the students are going to be like, yeah, and then they don't. Instead, by asking them, can you explain what you're doing? Can you tell me what your first step is supposed to be? That's when they have to actually tell you if they actually got it or not, right? So you do that really quick and then you get into the stations and you get going. Now for me, my stations usually take about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. So depending on the day, we might get through one or two stations a day and that's okay. Uh, I've tried stations where it's only been 10 minutes and I just didn't feel like we got enough information where they hit all three stations in one day and I felt it was too fast for my middle school students. It might be fine for high school students, but for my middle school students, 
they really only needed to get through one or two stations a day and that was the speed they needed to be at. Now the important thing is at the end of the day, no matter what, no matter how many stations they got through, please leave yourself at least five minutes to quickly go through each group to have them tell you what they um, learned from this station, what new information they learned, and what they now know about the topic. So you want them to have that time to reflect what is that new information they gathered and what they now know about the topic from doing that station. You want them to understand that this was, a, this was important, like there was a purpose for doing this, right? So that's how you do the science station. You get through all three of them, and then what I happen, when I get through all three, once all three are done, I have them do like a little write-up where each station is a piece of evidence, and they have to tell me um, what they now know about the topic, give me a sentence, claim sentence about the topic, give me evidence that tells me how you know that now about the topic, what did that online station teach you? What did the hands-on station teach you? What did the teacher-led station t teach you? So they're writing like a one sum page or a one paragraph summary, kind of a similar to a CER, telling me what they learned and the information they got from doing that station rotation model. So that's the station rotation model. Again, it's just one way to do science stations. There's a lot of different ways. I just happen to like this one because of, again, that teacher-led station where I can really work with just a small group of students and just spending 20 minutes with that small group makes a huge difference in their understanding of the topic. Have a great day.